Hello, my flustered filmophiles. It's your content controller, DS Lyons of the Movie Blues. Here to impart some quick capsule reviews onto my fellow droogs to chew over while I take a brief vacation. So like and subscribe. Uh, do the things that cost you nothing that might gain me everything. I love you. Thank you. First up for recent movies is the hotly debated No One Will Save You, which has been met with mostly critical praise, but a whole lot of mega aggro user reviews, including a whole heaping of nuclear negative meltdowns in the Movie Blues Rental Zone, our Facebook forum where you can chat all things Movie Blues, engage in movie brackets, etc, etc. Head there now if you haven't. But anyway, holy shit, I had people trying to throw my head on a pike for this. Not that that's anything new, and I guess I understand why. No One Will Save You is the rare mainstream American genre film that simply refuses to hold your hand. In today's current streaming culture, any movie that takes risks like this film did usually gets met with true vitriol. Christopher Nolan's fantastic tenet refused to hold hands, between its nigh indecipherable dialogue to its purposefully convoluted and complex plot machinations. And as such, some people really wanted to die while watching it. No One Will Save You decides to gamble its entire premise and presentation on a script that includes one, yes, one line of dialogue. And in a culture where most people watch direct-to-Hulu movies with probably 10 smart devices in their hands, thirstily scrolling through TikTok like the internet is about to dry up, I don't really expect that many people want to hang 10 with a movie that doesn't explain every fucking second of itself to you. A movie without dialogue may seem like a passive watch to some, but it's truly the opposite. I mean, you try following Mad God or Skinamarink or The Outwaters while you're trying to buff up your Raid Shadow Legends character. Anyway, with No One Will Save You, we have a basic alien abduction and invasion yarn. And while I'm tired of the endless string of pseudo-psyop alien horror movies that don't advance the idea of ETs past functioning as basic horror monsters, I still vibed with this movie's creatures, effects, visuals, and scares. This movie took the Greys, a pretty done-to-death alien design, and took it to some really eeky and creepy places. What's going on here? How's it going, man? How are what's, you? What's going on here? <laughs> I'm, what's going on here? What's going on here? Visitors' ships were much more nope than Independence Day, giving off a pretty mysterious and memorable vibe to the proceedings. As for the dialogue, I mean, I, I don't know why anyone would choose to have this be the dialogue-free experiment movie, other than to emulate some simple and effective terror like The Quiet Place did by just having a gimmick of, well, no one talking. Bird box, they, they can't see... The other one, they can't hear, it's the same shit. But movies like A Quiet Place used everyone being super quiet as an effective device for its actual plotting, whereas this film just seems like it's doing it for style's sake. I mean, look at this page from the script. Like, this is pretty unique and pretty fucking far out for a mainstream Hollywood movie, but like, why? What the fuck is this piece of shit? Maybe our main character here should have been like deaf or blind or mute so that the lack of dialogue could have served a greater ultimate purpose. I don't know, I didn't write the movie and it's not my job to fix it. Anyway, this movie is not nearly as bad as some people are making it out to be, and while it doesn't reach the heights of true alien terror like Nope or Fire in the Sky, it definitely will hold a slight but effective place in my memory. Maybe my own personal obsession with alien content overrides my common sense a little bit here, but I vibed with this movie. And again, how are you going to get mad at a mainstream American streaming sci-fi horror film for taking such a left field and difficult risk with its material? For these reasons, I'd say this movie should be a full send for any fan of genre films, B-movies, or slight sci-fi diversions that play out like extended Twilight Zone episodes. Just don't go in expecting, like, a new sci-fi classic, and you'll have a good time with this one. And while I'd prefer, you know, movies for adults that actually will bake your brain like Arrival, or even Jesus Christ, Charlie Sheen's The Arrival, I guess I'll take this over another possession horror movie, Haunted House, or Spooky Nut. <laughs> I prefer my sci-fi intellectually overflowing, ponderous, and beyond comprehension, but if it has to be another stupid fucking horror movie, you could do a lot worse. Six out of 10 here, uh, worth a watch for sure, but like, don't say I didn't warn you, I guess, but you know, go for it, it was fun. If you want to see a surrealist, feminist, fever dream comedy this year that lands all of its messaging and starts with the letter B, make sure it's bottoms and not this fucking overwrought piece of corporate feminist drivel. Get away with 
Bottoms is another fantastic win for, in this instance, writer, producer, and star Rachel Sinote, whose work in incredible films like Shiva Baby has catapulted her into instant indie queen status. That crown is breezily upheld here with the hilarious, heartfelt genre mashup Bottoms, which plays like an homage to Fight Club by way of Superbad. There's shades here of everything from Dodgeball to The Breakfast Club to even Scott Pilgrim along the way. This is a vibrant and surreal film, where heightened violence seems to stretch reality and further reinforce the stereotypes and messaging that the filmmakers wanted to address. The core relationships of this film are explored with tact, grace, and sometimes really profane humor, and the LGBT representation of the film's core characters is the best on-screen representation since M. Night Shyamalan's fantastic knock at the cabin. See Mattel and Greta Gerwig? You can actually make a movie full of up-to-date feminist ideals where the women aren't perfect and are infallible, real, tangible humans, even in a hyper-stylized world. It's almost as if real female writer-directors and creatives can craft a better movie than an insidious, sweat-factory-riddled toy company. Anyway, this movie was almost an instant classic, hovering in at around an 8 out of 10 for me. This was smart, edgy, profane, hilarious stuff, and wasn't afraid to go absolutely for it at any given opportunity. The soundtrack from pop goddess Charlie XCX is heavenly, and her amazing work here also trumps her corn y song from the Barbie soundtrack. The comparisons never end, I guess, but for me, an adult with a functioning brain who only likes being pandered to by toy companies when it's something actually fucking dope, will always prefer a riskier, smarter, and slicker product. Bottoms has all of that, and while it isn't at all okay for kids, it's at least a movie about kids that actually can resonate with a functioning adult. Anyway, damn, this one rocked. Who the fuck would ever guess that football player Marshawn Lynch would steal the entire show here like he was fucking P. Diddy screaming about kookaroos and get him to the Greek. Hey, uh, girl, thanks for coming in today. We have to come in. It's class. Try telling Dimitri Walker that. Little motherfucker came the first week and I ain't seen him since. Dimitri Walker committed suicide the first week of school, Mr. G. <laughs> Sure he did. Put this man in like any comedy right now. I mean, I would watch a buddy cop movie with him and John Cena like it was water to a fish, or maybe keep it in the John Cena verse and make him the next antagonist for Peacemaker in season two, because that show is a fucking 10 out of 10. Anyway. This. Okay. Yeah, this is a $1,200 burger. Ooh, you like that? This truffle stink. I ain't even gonna lie to you. This shit smell like ass cheeks. It's Getting off track. Uh, I reviewed the two things I'm going to review. Not going to go overboard here. I could just keep going about things. Uh, if you like what you hear here, please check out the rest of the channel. Um, I'm going to be coming back in October with so much Halloween content, lists, and a watch along of Friday the 13th, and just all sorts of goodies. So, you know, hit the sub button, stick around. Um, I'm not dead yet. Bye, guys.